Welcome to Electron Line. Another way in which we can, we, which we can graph parabolas is factor the equation. If, of course, if it's factorable. Well, let me start this over again because I'm stuttering too much here. All right, let's try this again. Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to look at another way to, to graph parabolas, quadratic equations like this, and the method is factoring if, of course, the problem is factorable. That's not always the case. But I believe this one is, so let's go ahead and try to factor it. When we do, we get the following. So we're going to write y is equal to a product of two binomials. So we're taking a trinomial, a parabola, an equation representing a parabola, and writing as a product of two binomials. So we know we're going to need an x and an x, because when we multiply the two binomials together, we should get back what we started with. So x times x is x squared. And we know we need all pluses, because everything here is positive. And now we're looking for two numbers. When you multiply, you get three. That can only be a one and a three, and then when you add them together, that's not a good looking three here, and then when you add the two numbers together, you get four, so three x plus one x gives you four x, so this is an exact representation of the original problem. Now we know that we have y written as the product of two uh, binomials. Now remember what we said about parabolas. If parabolas have real solutions, and let me put that over here, in this case the parabola opens upward, and if there's a real solution, that means that there are two places where it's going to cross the x-axis. And, of course, this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And that means where it crosses the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So if we, set equal, if we set y equal to 0 and solve for that equation, we might find the places where it crosses the x-axis if there's indeed two real solutions. So let's see if that's the case. So we're going to set y equal to 0 to find the places where it crosses the x-axis to find the two intercepts. So we do that to find the two x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis. Okay. Sometimes we see things done and we don't know why. So what we do here is we say we're going to set y equal to 0 because it's not equal to 0. We're setting it equal to 0 for this particular purpose to find the two x-intercepts. So 0 equals the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 3. Now here we have a situation where we multiply two things together and we get 0. Whenever you get 0 when you multiply two things together, that means either one or the other is 0, which means that x plus 1 must equal 0, or x plus 3 must equal 0. In the first case, if x plus 1 equals 0, that means x equals negative 1. In the second case, if x plus 3 equals 0, that means x is equal to minus 3. So what this means is those, excuse me, those are the two places where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So when we put a graph on the paper, in this case on the whiteboard, Here's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, x equals negative 1, which is right there, x equals negative 3, which is right there, this is of course negative 2. So we know that the parabola crosses those two places, and we know that the parabola opens upward. So that gives already a pretty good idea of how to graph it. We may want to do one more thing. At any case, we may want to know where it crosses the y-axis. To find out where it crosses the y-axis, we want to set x equal to 0. So we're going to set x equal to 0, and y, well again, to find the y-intercept, to find the y-intercept. So, let's do that. So y is equal to 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 3, which means y equals 3, and that is then the y-intercept. So when x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, there we go, 3, we know that the parabola also crosses that point. Now we have three points, we know it opens upward, so it becomes fairly easy to graph this parabola, and it looks like that. And that's how we do that, by simply factoring and finding what we call the solutions to the parabola, the places where the parabola crosses the x-axis. That's how it's done.